What's going on everybody? Kweku here back with another video. Today I wanted to show you guys Windows 7 running on M1 Mac, the base model M1 Mac of the Mac Mini, 8 gigabytes of RAM, 256 storage, and this is running public beta of macOS Ventura just to have the latest latest of what's out currently. So for starters, this is gonna be a brief tutorial. I'm not gonna show you everything just cause I cannot. However, I will show you UTM. So UTM, I've used it before on this channel on installing, I believe it was Windows 11 on this very machine. And uh, in fact, you can see the remnants of it in a second. Uh, you have two options when you go to this website, mac.getutm.app. You can either go to the downloads and just download it directly to your machine, or you can go through the Mac App Store. Note that when you download it via the Mac App Store, uh, it costs money. It costs ten dollars, nine ninety nine U.S. dollars, um, to do that. But either way, you can do that. So you can either hit download here or hit download up here, and then you see it pops up and it drops into your uh, download area right there. My internet's pretty slow, so actually we're going to close out of that. Uh, the next thing, what you want to do too, is you want to look for your Spice Guest tools, and with that, you just go to support. And then you go to Spice Guest Tools and uh, Kimu Drivers Windows. This is what you're going to want to pick uh, because we're going to run it on. We're going to run Windows. So those are the two things that you really need. Other than you need an ISO for Windows Seven, which I cannot show you where to find. Um, so hopefully you just have one laying around. Dot ISO file of Windows Seven. In this case, I'm using Windows Seven Ultimate. Um, but yeah, that's that's what you want to get. So next up you want to do is get out of this browser and go into UTM. So UTM, once you've installed it and everything like that, it'll pop up. Let me hit show all folders so that way it will actually I can actually see this. So this is what UTM looks like. Um, it's a pretty straightforward application, simple layout. All you're going to want to do, you see that I already have it set up here and you see the remnants of my Windows 11 on ARM from the previous video that I did a while ago. Uh, all you're going to want to do Yours will look a little different. Yours will have like a plus sign here, like a big grid of plus sign and a bunch of stuff here. Just hit that plus sign. That way it's to create a new VM. In my case, I have to click up here. I'm gonna hit start from scratch. And then the next thing I'm gonna wanna do is just name it. So I'm gonna name it Windows 7. And we're gonna go just change the icon style to operating system, because that's what it is. Uh, system, this is right here. You're gonna wanna hit show advanced settings. And before you do that, Depending on how much memory you have on your machine, I only have eight gigabytes, so I'm not gonna allocate a full eight gigabytes to it. I'm only gonna allocate 4096, which is about four gigabytes of RAM. Uh, the CPU is where it can get a little confusing. Make sure UEFI boot is also enabled. Uh, CPU, you're gonna wanna select this right here because there's a whole bunch of Skylake clients and different kind of uh, CPUs that it's gonna emulate, but you wanna pick Skylake client just because uh, that's the CPU that I think that was the one of the latest CPUs that was supported for Windows 7 uh, when it initially came out or when it was out. Next thing here for CPU cores, just pick four cores. Uh, my base model uh, M1 Mac, I believe, has eight cores, so I'm only doing half of them. If you have the M1 Max, M1 Pro, M1 Ultra, you can set as many as you feel comfortable with. I can only do four. Uh, force multi-core, just so that its speed is a little better. And then next up, we're going to Kimu. There's nothing really here that I need to show you. Drives is where it can get a little confusing. So what we're gonna do with drives is we're gonna import a drive. And basically all you're gonna do is you're gonna import the ISO and that's gonna be it. And then another thing you're gonna wanna do is create a new drive and then make sure that you just pick IDE and then give it about 64 gigs of uh, storage for that drive. So you're gonna have the boot drive, which is Windows 7 and then, or you're gonna have the boot ISO for Windows 7 that you have on your computer already. Uh, and then you're gonna have a storage drive for it to install on when we boot it up. Uh, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is go over to display. Uh, there's not really much to see here. It's just you can select full graphics. Uh, I don't believe I've found anything that actually matters here. Someone who knows more than me might be able to tell me more. But as far as I know, these two options were the ones that worked the best for me. Um, one thing, disclaimer for this setup is that uh, when you set it up, um, you might have, it's going to tell you that you don't have too much graphic memory. It's going to say you have like 64 megabytes of graphic memory, if I'm saying that correctly. And 
the problem is that we don't have drivers, the correct kind of drivers, because we're running an ARM 2x64 emulation, the drivers for graphics aren't going to be right, no matter even if you install the Spice Guest tools, which we still will install. So don't worry about that, but just set it here just so that way it boots and it installs like normal so you can get into the OS. Uh, next up, you got input. Leave input alone. Network. This is where you get in and you want to be able to get on the internet. So these are the defaults. I never touched anything here. Just keep it as defaults and that's it and you should be fine. Sound. You probably want sound, so let's hit enable. Leave it as default as well. Uh, sharing. This is where I haven't really gotten it to work, but just for my brain to be settled, I do enable clipboard sharing, uh, which requires Spice Guest tools, which we, of course, will install. Um, and then you can do directory sharing. I haven't gotten directory sharing to work, so I just left it alone. Um, but other than that, that's about it. I'm going to hit cancel just because I already have it installed. Um, but once you do that, uh, and you've mounted the Windows 7 ISO and everything, you can just start the virtual machine, let it install like normal. It'll do the normal stuff as usual, and uh, you'll be having Windows 7, let's say, in like 45 minutes. So I'm going to hit cancel here, and I'm going to show you the proof that it does, in fact, work. So I'm just going to hit the play button here and show you Windows 7. So give it a little bit to do its thing. Let's make it big. And let me show you it's starting Windows. And just like that, you see that Windows 7 is in fact installed. There's a little scaling problem here that I'm going to fix in just a second. Uh, but like Windows 7, it, it works overall. Let me fix the scaling problem and jump back in. There we go. So I fixed the scaling problem just by dragging the window a little bit. So you can see Windows 7 does install like normal. I'm dragging really fast. It works. Right clicking works just like normal. Uh, I'll show you the screen resolution area here uh, where it does not work correctly. Uh, so you can see it still says generic uh, monitor just because we're emulating ARM to x64 because this is Windows 7 x64. I'll hit cancel there. I'll show you that the internet also does work in two ways. So you have this way, which is just by going into Internet Explorer and just popping into msn.com and just give it a sec. So you can see here msn.com did in fact load. Um, and it, it, it does work. It is pretty slow uh, just because we don't have the right drivers for this. Um, but you can see that it is it is working fine. Um, you can browse the web. You can download Microsoft Edge and everything like that. It's just going to take a second just because we're doing this method. So it's not the it's kind of a janky method, but it works. You see download Microsoft Edge. Will, will the page even load correctly? Let's find out. I'll probably speed up. There we go. So you see the Microsoft Edge area here. So if I hit, if I drag down and try to see if it will drag. So you can see it's not the fastest. There's a huge delay uh, just because we don't have the right graphic drivers on there. I'm very curious on those of you who have like the MacBook Pros and the Mac Studios out there. How does this run for you when you get to allocate more resources to the virtual machine? Because I'm using the bare minimum resources since this machine that I currently have does not have many resources in it. Uh, but let me know what you guys think for that part. So the next thing we're going to do, though, uh, showing after me showing you that the web browser does in fact work, is I need to show you guys installing Spice Guest tools. So right now, all you do is go to File Explorer down below. Wait for it to slowly boot up as well. And then the next thing you're going to want to do is go to Computer. And then you can see here you have your hard disks, which is that 64 uh, gigabytes of storage that I told you to allocate. Then you have a removal drive here. This will originally be your Windows 7 drive, but I'll show you that you can just unmount it right now. So all you do to unmount it, assuming you're not full screen, is you just go to the top, go over here, and you'll see a CD icon right there. This is the drive image options. Click it, and then you'll see... Uh, your Windows 7 one here. I have Spice Guest Tools here because this is what I was working on. All you have to do is hit change and then locate Spice Guest Tools, um, the ISO that you downloaded from their website. Pop that in and then you'll have this here. Once you do that, um, you can just double click it and then you can open up Spice Guest Tools. Of course, I've already installed it, so it's not going to do much for me. Uh, but once you do that, you just double click this right here, the application itself. Let it down, let it install fully and download. It's going to tell you with the user account control prompts 
it's going to tell you that a thousand times because you need to allow it because it's an unknown source um, to download these drivers and things like that. But after that, you'll be good to go. Now, I showed you the internet first, and I'll just give you a disclaimer in that you need to do the Spice Guest tools first before you try to open up an internet browser just because it downloads the driver for the internet to work. So I showed you the internet that it was working after you do all this. This is what you're gonna to wanna to do first. But other than that, that's about it. Uh, Windows 7 fully working. Um, I'll even do one more thing here. And I'll even do uh, Command R, which is in space of Windows key R to show you Direct X uh, diagnostics. And this will show you what the specs of the machine are um, based on what we put in. So here it is, here are the specs of the machine based on what we put in here. You can see the Intel Core processor is a Skylake 4 GPU. It's only gonna be able to be at one gigahertz and that's just because of what we're doing here with the emulation. It's not a direct uh, one to one. Uh, you only get 40, 96 megabits of RAM or four gigabytes of RAM. Of course, again, if you have more RAM, yours will look different. Yours might show eight, yours might show 16, depending on how much RAM you put in. We're using DirectX 11. Windows 7 Ultimate in my case here. Um, system manufacturer is Kimu, if I'm even saying that right. And then under display where you typically see your graphics card that you have on Windows, uh, you're only gonna see standard VGA graphics adapter um, limited to just one resolution, which is 1024 by 768, which is why the scaling is kind of weird. But other than that, that's about it. Sound works. Uh, you can still use Media Center, believe it or not. It's kind of slow, I'm not gonna really I don't know if I should show you, but let's let's let me just show you what Media Center looks like. It's gonna say TV and video may not work because the video card does not meet the minimum uh, memory requirement. Well, that's fine. You could just click OK. I might have to speed through this. Here's Media Center. So now you see that I'm using the keyboard, and uh, you can go into Media Center and look at all the stuff. There's not really anything you can really do here in Media Center other than probably play music. Um, and maybe show pictures. In fact, let me see what happens if I go to my picture library, see if there's anything even there. Okay, so it says media libraries. You can add pictures and stuff. I'll hit cancel. We'll go to sample pictures. And then you can see these default Windows 7 uh, sample pictures in Media Center running perfectly fine. There we go. So then you got your usual Media Center pictures in there. You can hit escape to get out of this, escape again to get out of that, and that's about it. That's all she wrote for uh, Windows 7. So I'm just going to hit X right here, and X right here, and X right here. So that's about it. That was Windows 7 on UTM on M1 Mac. This is the base model, Mac Mini, as I said. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, and if you have any solutions to anything that I said that I haven't already mentioned, um, let me know as well. Uh, if you found a way to get graphics support to work, which it's not going to work most likely uh, because we're not doing, we're not Intel based, we're ARM, ARM based on M1, let me know. My name is Kwaku. I'll catch you guys in the next one.